Emmett Till. Warning, this video contains images that some may find disturbing. Emmett Till was born July 25, 1941 in Chicago, Illinois to Mamie and Louis Till. When Emmett was six, he had polio. He recovered, but had a stutter for the rest of his life. In 1955, Mamie's uncle, Moses Wright, visited Chicago. Emmett became enamored by his great uncle and his stories of the Mississippi Delta. He begged his mother to let him go back home with Moses for a visit. Moses lived in Money, Mississippi. Mamie knew that money was nothing like Chicago. She urged him to take caution in how he interacted with the white citizens of Mississippi. On August 24, Emmett had been in Mississippi for just four days. He and his cousin, Curtis Jones, went to Bryant's Grocery. Carolyn Bryant and her husband, Roy, owned the grocery store. Carolyn was behind the counter when Emmett walked in to buy some candy. It has been reported that when Emmett left the store, he wolf whistled. His cousins knew that whistle was dangerous. Carolyn would later testify without a jury present that while in the store, Emmett grabbed her hand and asked her for a date calling her baby. According to Carolyn, 14 year old Emmett then grabbed her waist and told her not to worry because he'd been with white women before. Then he left with his cousin. On August 28, Roy and his half-brother, J.W. Milam, went to Moses' house looking for Emmett. They arrived around 3 a.m., pulled Emmett from his bed, and led him to their truck. They tied Emmett up and drove him to a barn where they beat him. They shot him and threw Emmett's body in the Tallahatchie River. Emmett's body was found three days later. Emmett was naked, but he was still wearing a ring his mother had given him with his father's initials on it. He was unrecognizable. The ring was the only way Moses could identify the body. Mamie was devastated and she demanded that Emmett's body be returned to Chicago. When she saw it, she decided she would have an open casket funeral. She wanted the world to see what had been done to her son. 50,000 people viewed Emmett's body and thousands attended his funeral. Pictures of his body mutilated in his casket were printed in Jet magazine. When asked in court to identify the man who took Emmett from his home, Moses said that he could only identify J.W. Moses stood and pointed at him. This could have cost Moses his life. It took an hour for the jury to find Roy and J.W. not guilty on the murder charges. The kidnapping charges were dropped. No one was ever criminally punished for Emmett's murder. Moses and other witnesses who testified were forced to leave the area for fear of their lives. The year after the trial, safe from further prosecution, Roy and JW were paid $4,000 for an interview with Look Magazine. They admitted to the kidnapping and murder. Neither expressed any remorse. This interview led to backlash in money. The grocery store went to bankrupt. Roy and J.W. couldn't find work. The men moved to Texas, but their reputations followed them. J.W. died in 1980 and Roy died in 1994. Mamie toured the country telling Emmett's story. 
She passed away on January 6, 2003. In 2004, Emmett's case was reopened by the United States Department of Justice. They exhumed his body and he was buried in a new casket. His glass-topped one is on display at the Smithsonian National Museum of African American History and Culture. In 2017, Carolyn was interviewed by author Timothy Tyson. She admitted that she lied about Emmett grabbing her waist. She claimed not to remember exactly what happened in the store that day, but she said, nothing that boy did could ever justify what happened to him. Rosa Parks later said that she was thinking of Emmett when she refused to give up her seat on the bus on December 1, 1955. If you want more information on Black Lives Matter, please visit blacklivesmatter.com. Please visit www.icantbelieveitsnonfiction.com and don't forget to subscribe.